This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 719 uh, Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Compound in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to chat some wrestling with you. Chat, podcast, talk, I don't know. Whatever the case is. Uh, you guys are out there on the stream on multiple formats or on podcast form. Thank you, everybody, for following us. We've got a hell of a crew with us tonight. First of all, uh, the man out of lockdown in Beacon, New York, the only Mayhemer with a future endeavor letter from the WWE. He is Mad Mike. Hey, Sorg. Hmm. I'd like to point out that I've been podcasting over twice as long as the Confederacy last week. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> um yes that's my heritage mm-hmm. podcasts <laughs> everybody has their their spot also yeah. with us back with us with kimball the cat who just went off frame cameraman robs with just us. ran yeah she'll be back she'll be back <laughs> don't worry she'll be back the, the she's never more than like three feet away <laughs> yeah pretty attached to you mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh also he's only a month old what's she gonna do <laughs> also back with us and he's gonna catch us up on the uh single day of the return of new japan Re- pro wrestling uh mainstream matt back with us Hi. it's a pleasure i am ready i am well rested and uh i've been up since 6 a.m <laughs> two straight days <laughs> for two straight that days doesn't... that seems counterproductive Okay, mm. okay, we'll see if he can last throughout the uh, entire show. Also, first timer on the Wrestling Mayhem show, I believe. He is uh, one of the voices of the Renegade Wrestling Alliance and the Prospect Pro Wrestling commentary team, Tony Kincaid, also Snappy Dancer. <laughs> Tony, how you doing? It's never going away, or is it? It's no, never, no. never well, in a million years. I mean, I mean, just let me have this week. I mean, we did just release no. it yesterday, so. That's, that's true, but you, you didn't have to do a dance mix. You didn't I, have to do I a dance mix. I think I exactly needed to do a dance mix. <laughs> I mean, it deserved it. I mean, so for those those that don't know, you, Tony Tony um, lost a bet in a live um, a live interactive poll uh, where he was in a, a, a virtual wrestling match with a child. How, mm-hmm. how old was that kid? Uh, five. 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 Okay. He lost that to the kid and mm-hmm. had to wear a dress on the show. Uh, mm-hmm. Sunday night for RWA, mm-hmm. and uh, there were there were dance break cues. I shared this on the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. And uh, dude, you got some sick moves. No, I don't. I, they're you, they are embarrassingly right, me, awful moves. Let me rephrase you. You have some moves. <laughs> Deal. We will agree. We will agree to that stipulation. You moved a lot. There was movement. There was, there was the act. There was the, for Newton's first law of movement. Movement was in effect. <laughs> yes, it fulfilled all the requirements to to be to be a move. Yeah. <laughs> Miriam <laughs> Webster did define it as <laughs> dancing at some point. <laughs> There's a picture next to it is him uh, with his booty up in the air. Uh, so. <laughs> I believe there was some twerking in there. I don't know. I couldn't tell on the frame rate on the feed, but uh, so there was there was some twerking. There was some thrusting. Uh, a little bit of side hip action. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. All things that I'm excited for my future children to find. Fantastic, fantastic. Anyways, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can find everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, uh, where you can find this and other. Great podcasts and discussions. Uh, the newly renamed, you know, and I'm just going to rename the show every week. Uh, the Monday Mayhem show that we do uh, after that chat room. Uh, me and and uh, so Matt, Matt, Mike. 
don't like Monday Night Warriors. But, but, well, it was Monday Mayhem. We can do Monday Night Warriors next week, and then we can we can keep going with it until we settle on one again, right? Sorg, let's assume there's something beyond next week. <laughs> okay, we'll get into that as well. But also, please go check out everything there. Please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast for the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed, maybe. Um, so you can get all that stuff and you don't miss a show. We've had some great stuff on the Indie Mayhem show the last couple of weeks. Um, Rob, I think you're getting a little bit of clicking on your end. I'm not sure that's bringing you up. Uh, but uh, also, you can drop us a line at that email address. Good times! Good times, Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. That number should already be in your call while I'm drunk on your address book uh, on your phone. And, uh, of course, uh, please check out uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter and the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group library discussion happening over on the Facebook group, too. And, of course, we're live here every Tuesday on Facebook Live is the main chat, but we are also out there on Periscope, Twitch, uh, YouTube, and... Oh, I forgot to start the Instagram. Uh, but <laughs> we, we'll, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll kick that going what? after I'm done with this and I get you guys talking about something. Uh, the 18 to 24 demographic has been forgotten. So we, I know. They need that that direct close-up of my face because it's vertical video. <laughs> Deploy the gram. Deploy the gram. Uh, but I can't do that because I need my screen right now to tell you about our wonderful Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Our friends at the fan of the show level. Bo diggity! Woo! Uh, Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, um, Team Hamifist, and at the Poppy Club level, Bradley Brothers, Dave Podner, Daniel Towery, Tina Keys, Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy, who got a new haircut today, and Kyle Turner, and at the manager level, our friends at OccupyProWrestling.com and Farmsworth Investments. Thank you, everybody. You guys can support the show too at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. All right. You know what? A lot of today, I think we're going to be talking about production. Wait, wait, we want to talk about production first, or we want to talk about Japan? Wait, let, here's your choose your adventure uh, part of the show. Where do we, because that's that's my two points of the day. Okay, but before we get into that. Happy I mean, thing or sad thing? Yes. Happy thing or sad, <laughs> happy thing, or sad thing. Mike, you were saying? Um, before we get into either, I, I have to bring up a joke I just read about Raw last night. Okay. Um, from Brandon Stroud, who deserves... Honestly, th- th- this is. I almost, I almost had to mute my microphone. I was laughing so hard. Um, he said Ric Flair looks more and more like the first Doctor every time he sees him. And oh. and they should make a show called Doctor Wu. Oh, <laughs> oh boy! I'm not gonna w- lie. WWE Network. There is money here. You are being handed yes. free money. <laughs> that that is. Because um, as someone who has a literal Lego TARDIS right next to him, mm-hmm. I would watch the shit out of Dr. Wu. Um, I also now want to take every single doctor that's existed and assign them WWE personalities. Okay. This, 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 seems, this seems like a good project for... for that's the, like for, that could take a while. Yeah. Yeah, it does. I don't know if it would take as long as you think. I can, I can, help, I can help with the reboot. I'm versed in the reboot and six. Um, not the most re- uh, I'm five and six. Mm-hmm. Uh, not the most versed in uh, seven or eight. I need to catch up myself. Um, anyways, okay, let's 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 go to Japan. Let's go to Japan first, and and we'll talk. I I just wanted something positive, guys. I need I need. If you can tell last week, my 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 anguish professional wrestling apparently can only be defined by lyrics from Linkin Park songs. So I want to start with something positive. Um, I you gotta see last night's clip for that. Uh, Matt, Matt, I don't know what you're fighting for, Sorg. Or why you have to breathe, <laughs> Matt? With with children in the background, please tell us about uh, yeah. what New Japan is going on. So if you hear it, New Japan is back, baby. What more yes, do you need to know? Yes. They served their time. They served their time. They put it on stall since, like, I don't know, like, they had it in parks since February. They were doing nothing. Yeah. I mean, they were doing something. They were, like, the first thing. to pull the plug, right? Yeah, but they just, like, they shut it down. And the crazy thing about this is that even while New Japan was just, like, smacked, there were organizations in Japan that never stopped. Really? Because they are desperately crazy wow. people. But we're not going to, uh, well, you know, let's well, try I, I gotta to say, I got to say, on. look at some, what some of those promotions do. And you think a coronavirus yeah. is going to stop them? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. Um. So 
Yeah, New Japan uh, is back. The, the New Japan Cup is underway. Uh, they did a little um, uh, surprise show. Well, not, not a surprise show, I guess. But an unannounced card show uh, to kind of kick things off. The usual, you know, six-man tags, eight-man tags. The kind of meat and potatoes New Japan undercard stuff that you live for. And if you're me, it's just you could just wrap yourself up in a nice, like, chaos versus LIJ six-man. Like a warm blanket at six in the morning oh. and just kind of curl up and just be like let's just watch them go through the motions let's watch naito wrestle in his t-shirt for the whole time i don't care <laughs> just just do your thing um and then the uh the tournament itself got underway uh early this morning or perhaps three days ago japan time i'm not sure how time zones work <laughs> or two days two um, days from now you know two days from uh, barely yeah somewhere in the time vortex out over the pacific ocean where we yeah. crossed into yesterday and uh yeah uh, they started a pretty neat streamlined show you got like four tournament matches you got a eight man tag in the middle of it uh cuz you can't without it um <laughs> and uh yeah it was nice uh it, it's a little uh tricky because uh a lot of the talent is still outside of Japan and it's very difficult to get back inside the country uh so uh your your Will Ospreay and your uh Jay White and your Kenta to name a few uh not in the tournament anymore so they are going to the young lions and the uh, junior heavyweights to help fill out the card so uh but hey we got a um uh uh toro yano this morning uh which is great and uh the main event was really good each versus uh el desperado if that's your thing and uh if you're a wrestling fan tomohiro ishii should absolutely be your thing mm. so uh i hope you everybody enjoyed that and uh we're on and on they're back uh, at it again tomorrow morning um Sorgi, the um, the three person booth uh, for the New Japan broadcast. If you're watching live on New Japan World, uh, there was no English commentary. Apparently, we do not have this technology yet for Kevin Kelly to call this match in another country. No, uh, so he's apparently going to uh, record that later this week, and it'll probably pop oh. up over the weekend. So, you so absolutely have to have it that way. So it's it's, uh, it's, so yeah, it's, it's okay that I haven't hopped in yet because I can just drop into the English stuff later. Yeah, you could if if that's your thing. Yeah, you can do that. But I mean, I mean, the uh, Japanese commentary is is great. I mean, and if you saw this booth, sorry, I sent you a picture of it. Yeah, I was trying to figure out. Yeah, hold on, I'll pull it up it. for a second. Um, I will describe. I will describe for the listeners very quickly. It's um, it's a long table. Uh, you've got um, play by play guy for New Japan whose name escapes me, and that is a crime because he's awesome. And on the other far side of the table, you've got uh, Milano Collection AT sitting there. Uh, you've got a plexiglass uh, between both of them. And then between them, between double plexiglass, <laughs> is a monitor. And the third member of the announce team is in the monitor. And I don't know how. I don't know if it's dumb luck. I don't know how they did this. But, like, the background behind the announce team in the arena with basically like the pushed in bleachers that you remember from gym class yeah, in high yeah, school, yeah. you know, kind of that stacked up, um, you know, plastic, plastic gap, plastic gap, plastic gap like that. I don't know if this was like some sort of lucky accident, but the background behind the woman, the third member of the announce team was nearly identical to this. So when they showed the three of them and she was perfectly <laughs> framed, Sorg, Sorg, she was this video shot. We have suffered through so many horrifying video chats going out over uh -huh. broadcast network television yeah yeah terribly framed looking at you today frame show. Rates. looking at you today show. Sword. yeah sort it looked like she was physically there between them the shot was pristine it was framed perfectly the background <laughs> matched what was behind the other two guys it was perfect i couldn't believe it and um i don't know what else to say nothing but respect for new japan for this one accomplishment <laughs> They made it. this person in a this woman in a monitor appear to physically be between the other two guys on the announce team. So, so you know, you want to know my first impression when you sent me this picture? I'm looking at this girl in the middle on the TV, and I'm like, is she rendered on a PlayStation? Because she does not look like, like she's like, like like this looks too good, right? Like they put they, it was perfect. But I was ready for you to tell me that they implemented an AI commentary team to interact with the real ones. I mean, maybe I don't know. I mean, it, it fooled me, so I mean, that's all that really matters. If I bought it, then you know. But I mean, just what a technical technical feat! Just yes. I was impressed. 
So um, it's just it's great to have New Japan back. The the vibe is good. Um, there's just enough young lions and photographers around the ring making noise. Okay. To make it work, okay. uh, it's not like. It's not like the AEW um, or the more recent WWE presentations where there's wrestlers all over the place. There's no one out there kind of pretending to be in the crowd, but there's enough chatter. And I don't know, like the commentary is like, um, they did a really good job of just like, it appears to be just business as usual. And they're calling the matches just as they would if there were 18,000 people in the arena with them. And they're calling these moves out. And uh, so props to them for bringing the right amount of intensity. Um, it's a good watch. It was fun. Good. So so on that vein, I, I was impressed with... Um, I was watching back NXT earlier today, ca- trying to catch up with last week's episode. And uh, it, it, it they, they were flashing back and getting a lot of people's reactions watching at home or something like that. Or I don't know, from the bump or their, their watch long or something. But is Morrow calling the NXT shows from home? Is that what I'm yeah. catching? Yes. I, Morrow and Beth are, I think. Wow. I that is impressive. And like I'm not like typically like we I, I've caught some like like NXT UKs where you're just like, oh, they're definitely like not there or something, right? Like it sounds Well the NXT UKs I think are just highlight shows at this point. Oh right now they are, of course. Yeah. It's weird. I, I turned I tuned stuff. that in this week uh for the first time in a while and it's just like, hey, here's like they're taking picks. I'm like, hey, here's um Here's a uh, uh, Regal and Fit Finley from the Great American mm-hmm. Bash in like 2004, maybe. I, you know, so I was like, okay, I, I see what we're doing here. And then it was like Rhea Ripley and um, uh, uh, Piper Nevin, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, anyway, so so it was um, no to- Tony Storm. It was Tony Storm and Rhea from the I think of the finals. Yeah, cause I was gonna say Piper is no longer with NXT UK. Oh really? I, is she out? Or maybe out? I'm thinking of Jazzy. Oh, oh, Jazzy! I think I'm thinking of Jazzy. Jazzy. Yeah, yeah. Um, No, because yeah, last I knew, I thought Piper was a pretty big mainstay over there. So, Um, but anyways, uh, so what was my point? Oh, there. So that that brings us along to um, before before we get to the 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 bad news part, because we're going to have a lot of separate thoughts about that probably. Um, We we, what a weird fucking weekend for wrestling. (laughs) So. Hey, we didn't have much going into the the the. I keep wanting to call it payback, backlash. Um, backlashly, backlashly. Thank you. His his name is in the pay per view, so you should have won, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, we we got arguably too cinematic. I know we were having that discussion before the show. Um, the greatest match of all time. There was a discussion I had with somebody about: the, Are we too hard on this sh- this this match for what they did? It was a good match. There's a lot of storytelling. Not discounting that, I have a problem with the presentation. I, uh, I have technical problems with the presentation. I can't get past on this mm-hmm. one, and I know they're trying things, and it's going to be hit and miss. Okay, like I get that, but um, go ahead. Do you know what my main problem was with the presentation? Hmm. My main problem: unmatching crowds, more headlocks. No, 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 no. <laughs> that all that stuff I can forgive. That's fine. All that stuff because that's going to happen. That's gonna happen. I, I understand that. My biggest production problem with it, first of all, the ghost voice of Howard Finkel. Ugh. Oh. And for no reason whatsoever, the Madison Square Garden microphone. Yeah. Like you only do one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. You only do one or the other. Well, I got see. I got the reasoning behind it. Like, obviously, the the greatest match ever, and because it's a WWE produ- production, Vince thinks the greatest match ever occurred in 1980 in Madison Square Garden. Um, so I, in the 80s, I, I'm forgetting what year uh, Hogan Andre was, but yeah, I but mean, that wasn't in the Madison Square Garden. No, it wasn't. It was, it was somewhere like, else. No, like yeah. None so, of the ones so, they listed as their greatest match ever took place in Madison Square Garden. So it's not like that's even synonymous with it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, so it's yeah. But for your layman, it's, it's not like your, they're. And it's not even like either of these men are from New York. They're from Canada and St. Louis. Mm. Like, but, but from your lay, from from your average fan, they're looking at this and they're seeing the production. They're hearing Fink's voice. Mm. 
first of all, I'm not fan has no clue what that no clue who Fink is yeah. and no clue what say, the overhead point, mic looks What like. is the average fan? Yeah, yeah. the <laughs> the average fan like you like maybe they know Fink's voice, maybe. But the average fan, they should have just gotten Lillian Garcia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's it's a fair point. Um, I I did like going back to the old school uh shirt and bow tie. Mm-hmm. I did like that part of the production. Uh, the the piped in crowd. Uh, it's good to know they're using the WWE 2K20 engine to good good use since no one's playing the game. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but. They're still showing 2K19 more in the background. <laughs> I saw yeah, that. I saw the AJ Styles poster. Like, was, like all over the place last night, you know? Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's it was like you would think that was the new game and that it wasn't like two years old. Was it? Wait, so <laughs> were, they, were they back in like, was it like the hallway where there's just like a bunch of pay-per-view posters and DVD posters and or stuff like, like that? Or like in the office or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. it was in it's an office. because they have, they have um, posters of everything. Yeah, it, it, so so because yeah. th- th- it's completely incidental because those are just the posters they have up because that's just what they do there versus, and actually it's been, a, I feel like it's been a while since they've done one of those where it's like the GM's office and here's the poster of our latest two releases, right? So, but that's closer to what it was, like a set yeah, design yeah. thing, not a not a oh, this is just what the hallways look like. Yeah, kind of. yeah. No, it was like it's it's it was just kind of funny how that's that seems to be the one they're still pushing. Yeah, you know, even yeah. though it's like two years old. <laughs> um, that's hilarious. Um, I uh, Matt, um, we we often uh, hit each other back and forth about um when production goes awry, uh, in, in wrestling and in news apparently. <laughs> Um, can you guess the? Can you guess two of the points where I literally yelled at the screen? Mike can back this up. I um, I think yeah, I, I think this might have been spoiled for me, but I think you might have hated those uh, camera shots that were like inside the action. Yeah, yeah, like the under the lockup and like the uh, what was it like the grounds eye view of uh, Edge getting DDT at one point. Yeah, um, to me, to me, that screamed. This is where we took a water break. <laughs> and 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 set up this shot because I don't feel like those shots will have. Hey, get it in the ring for this suplex, right? Kind of situation. Like it's it it doesn't fit for me. Um, and really took me out of the match. I don't know. Yeah, that was a little. Mm-hmm. Sorry about that. No good. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a little bit weird. Um, the other thing that like that, the thing that kept like going into my brain as I was watching this and and hear more about it later like okay so they've got all like the developmental kids in mm-hmm. the audience now mm-hmm. they can instruct them to do whatever they want so i wwe should be able to get their ideal fan reaction you know basically exactly what they want to the, the the ideal reaction to a professional wrestling match is what you should get out of that crowd and you got the crowd mm-hmm. chanting you know all these you know played out chance that get done way too much like you get the this is awesome did they do fight forever did they chant that yeah they did yeah, yeah they did at one point like if i were if hypothetically i were in <laughs> control of that crowd i would be telling them look this is an opportunity you guys are missing to reprogram your fans <laughs> to perform at a higher level here is all you need to instruct those fans to do. Cheer for the baby face, boo the heel. Don't cheer the match. Don't cheer, you know, whatever. It just don't cheer the company. Cheer the dude. Cheer on edge. That's your you're the cheer edge, boo Orton. That's it. And those are instructions going forward for every match you're gonna be watching mm-hmm. inside of that uh, arena. And it's bad enough, like, they're already trying to tell us it's the greatest match ever, right? So then the reactions we all see are the people, you know, like, because this is supposed to be the greatest match ever, they're going to be saying fight forever, or this is awesome, mm-hmm. or this is, you know, to where almost, like like you said, if they're just, like, cheering and booing, that's, you know, while it's pretty generic, it's still better than hearing exactly what you're expecting to At least they didn't cheer. chant greatest ever. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just, <clears throat> I just feel like in general, like wrestling fans in general need to get off of that kind of mm-hmm. get off of that road of chance and just pick a side. And you know that that's what wrestling's supposed to be. And it, it, it baffles me that WWE is like they're leaning right into it. It's just a yeah. Sound. yeah. 
Well, no, that's 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 aside, Matt, it's against creative. <laughs> But that being said, it's still like technically like I, even with the cuts and all that stuff. And I know maybe in the live situation, the match would have been different. It certainly certainly would have been a little bit shorter. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say probably probably 10 to 15 minutes shorter. Um, but it was a good match. Mm-hmm. It, it, but it was a cinematic. It was like it was like a hybrid cinematic real match, but not really. And You can't really. You, you can pick up sort of kind of a couple times where it was obviously cut and redone and an angle was changed here and there. If they would have just filmed Randy Orton and Edge wrestling for 25 to 30 minutes normally, mm-hmm. that's probably a really good match. Maybe not the greatest match ever, but they're two of the best ever. Why not just do that? Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. it, it, mm-hmm. It's interesting because when you, um, you know, discovering this from when I, I think we talked about this a little bit. <laughs> what is happening on Fortnite right now, Matt? <laughs> so I think he just quieted him. Uh, but anyways, um, we, we talked about this last week from from you know the, the training sessions recordings we did with Prospect Pro Wrestling. When you take away the fans and, you, and you're able, you don't have to do everything in one take. A, you know, in front of uh, uh, ten thousand people, five thousand people, uh, fifty people, like it changes the whole formula for things and how they can be presented. Right? It, it changes that mm-hmm. idea. You know that, and and uh, we were kind of joking. Um, I think Matt was saying, uh, "Can we really discount this as the greatest match ever?" Being a pre-recorded, fanned, uh, cut up, you know, sweetened kind of thing. Because does that disqualify all of Lucha Underground? You know, uh, and and I think there's that man. I don't. There's a lot of people who have been talking about like kind of like like with certain of these like quote unquote cinematic matches. You know, your Boneyard match and the Money in the Bank and the Stadium Stampede. I mean, it's obvious that those are not. I, I mean, people can consider yeah. them real matches if they yeah. want to count yeah. them in that column. But like in a perfect world, like. Do, are they really are they playing by those same rules as you know every other wrestling match well, that I mean, occurs? No, and this one really wasn't either. You're in front of like you know you're in front of a, a crowd that is being basically instructed to do what they're going to do, and you're and you're cutting, you're shooting it like I, I don't know how long they went you know between edits here and there, but like I mean I, it, it 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 does make you wonder like does this even count as a match yeah. or is this yeah. just but- Go off I mean, into the but, um, into the pile of stuff like the boneyard and whatnot, which were good, you know. And, and sure, this match was good too, but it's it's just kind of a weird in between zone. But we we act like you know this is the first time that we've had pre taped matches on a show. It's not the yeah. Hollywood Backlot Brawl back from WrestleMania twelve was pre taped for the most part. But, right, Granted, there was right. one live element to it. Right, where we're also but, like we're not calling the greatest, time heat. we're not calling like, it the greatest back, backlot yeah. brawl ever. It was though. yeah, but ha- halftime was. heat Pl- where there were there was a fucking title change mm-hmm. like like you can't Pl- just well, you can't out and out call these not matches because they are matches yeah. they the only thing that may not be considered a match technically is the Firefly Funhouse match because that was more but, of but a, I, a deep dive into John Cena's psyche yeah <laughs> but I think also like we're kind of taken for granted too that everything has been live for like the last twenty well not live live but you know like. Um, you know, before like what twenty years ago, it's like WWE was usually recorded anyhow, yeah. right? Yeah, except for yeah, they didn't start going so, live until the, like late ninety six. Like for full, yeah, and then it was like what every other week or something, right? Mm-hmm. But but um, or every third week or whatever it was. But but yeah, and, like you talk about halftime heat and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, there's no doubt that was pre recorded and stuff, and you know it, you know, and it was going to air in that. 15 to 20 minute, whatever the halftime was for the Super Bowl. So it wasn't a lot of, you know, oh, this was pre recorded or this was. Yeah. <laughs> and even then, like the things we're talking about being ridiculous now were just as ridiculous then, too, you know, because like the, the forklift cam, you know, <laughs> like that. <laughs> but, but, but it's funny, it's like, yeah, yeah, like I said, everything used to be technically, you know, pre recorded, but it's only now really where, where they're getting heat for it. <laughs> because yeah. or or it's starting or it's starting to take on this they've been doing it so much lately that like the whole cinematic thing it's starting to mean what it doesn't really mean 
you know? <laughs> and, and so where do you see like a match, like the greatest match ever? And it's almost like, why, why bother? I, I, why I, do the, you know, it, it just stands I, out that much more. Like when you see the inside of a tie up and it's like, why? I, yeah. Why I, is I, that I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. And even uh, yeah. partners pulling out outside of takeovers, NXT yeah. was taped weekly until last October when they went live on USA, of yeah. course, and they were uh, mm-hmm. great matches. And, and I think we're not, we're not, you know, there's, there's matches and then there is a, Mm-hmm. You know, I think the problem <laughs> is we're seeing an obviously doctored match, right? Yeah. We can't just watch mm-hmm. it sit back. And if there is anything that they had to retake or something like that, we we don't notice. But the problem is... Because yeah, yes. honestly, like with Lucha Underground, like we were saying before the show started, before I heard that they cut down matches and stuff, yeah. you couldn't tell. No, no. Yeah. Like, unless you're really, really like intricately watching the match and even then they cut it down to a science where you never know Mm -hmm. that they cut a bunch of shit out and and i gotta say like if it wasn't for the fact that we had to hear the one of the worst taglines uh uh, since money in the bank uh of the greatest Mm -hmm. match ever and that getting shoved (laughs) down our throats uh uh the last four weeks like i i I already have an adverse reaction to you telling me this and using Mm -hmm. one of my one of one of my favorite musical songs uh, reprise without Hugh Jackman. Fuck you. Uh, is you know that bothers me to begin with, and then you pull all this hey, other so shit around. Panic at the performance center, all right? What's that? It was and, panic at the performance center. Yeah, <laughs> it's and, so and, good. Oh, I was gonna say, and also it would be one thing if they were doing the whole event that way, you know. But when it's so obviously just the one, yeah, yeah, match or or yeah. that, you know what I mean. Hey. Like if they did the whole show, that it would be interesting to see it done of in course. that style. But we're, we're complaining about this not being real enough. After, as Ponder points yeah. out, we just came from a segment with <laughs> with ninjas on motorcycles and magical turkey legs. Oh, don't worry, we'll yeah. complain about that so, soon. So I, yeah. I think I think that the kind of goes without saying. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. It's really not. It's really not about pre-taped. It's it's the cinematic thing, and you know yeah. some of these cinematics like. We can't talk about Matt Hardy without ca- saying that he probably popularized the cinematic thing, yes. and everyone has now jumped on that that boat. Mm-hmm. I, I I do agree. Uh, it's outside of the Firefly Funhouse match, which was my favorite match of the year so far, just because it was so meta for mm-hmm. a wrestling fan. Like I'm as as a quote unquote smart Mark. Uh, you know, you you sit there and you're like. Oh, holy crap! They're doing a deep dive into like uh, this. This is basically a pro wrestling wiki page turned into a match. That was awesome, and every one of the cinematics have had great concepts in base value. Um, I, I think we're just getting to the point where, as a as a group of people who are wrestling fans, we're tired of it because the, it's mm-hmm. it's happening so much it used to be a dessert it used to be this really rich you know triple chocolate devil's food cake type deal and now we're seeing it every pay-per-view on multiple companies in multiple ways with multiple angles and they're advancing the angles a cinematic every once in a while is a great way to hide things you know we, for the training sessions everything was pre-taped but we only had one cut we had to reshoot mm-hmm Mm-hmm. And and there was a reason for that. So we can't um, knock pre-tape because the, the, the television era was started on pre-tape. Maybe just dial the cinematics back. Give us back a 20-minute, even if it's pre-tape. Like, who gives a crap? Yeah. Like, if someone botches, who cares? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's wrestling, who cares? And, and also and not doing mention- it every show. Oh, I was going to say, and doing it every show, that's how you end up, I guess, with – a show that's nothing but that because that's what WWE likes to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that'll become and, the July pay-per-view, you know? Yeah, yeah. And like, not to mention that the other cinematic we got, the Viking Raiders versus the street profits. That was advertised as a normal match. Yeah. That afternoon. So, I mean, wait, wait, wait. It was that, really a- that afternoon it was advertised. Yeah, but it was advertised as a normal match. Like, it's also a bait and switch. Like if you knew you were mm-hmm. doing a cinematic thing, which was clearly shot beforehand, obviously don't tell us it's going to be a normal match. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like th- this isn't like saying Adam Cole versus Velveteen dream in a parking uh, lot. Bro. Like, yeah, we kind of expect that to be 
not a normal match. I also like, um, I, I also want to point out for them to have dropped that that day it is interesting because you when you watch that segment, that was a complicated segment. Oh god, that, that, is, that segment, that segment, like. It, there, no, no, there, no, no, there's wait, a there's a dartboard of ideas. Right, right, but but, but everyone I'm saying, just hit every target. I'm saying production wise, fell off. The dartboard did, fell off. They they didn't. Yes. I don't think they just did that Saturday night and decided to do it. Right, like that yeah. is production wise, that is a com complex segment to put together with the number of shots, that's the a, effects. That's a several hour shoot. Oh yeah, that's a several oh, yeah. hour shoot. They were there all night Easily. for that, and especially that was probably a two night shoot because. All that stuff was darkened out, and uh -huh. it's summer. Uh -huh. It stays later, especially in Florida, a lot we, longer. We were, I think we all looked out the window and noticed how light the sky still was <laughs> we're in that segment. Yeah. We're just like, wait a minute. That's, that doesn't track. But um, it, end, it ended in a dumpster, and that's all I have to say about that match. And yeah. So, oh, sorry. Sorry. I have, a, I mean, I have a guest in here. <laughs> I was pointing it, it randomly ended in a dumster. Distance. All right. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll, I'll take I'll take oh, if you give me the cinematic that like edge or ten, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely okay with that. But yeah, the bait and switch, I was not cool with that. I I was lukewarm at best on Street Profits Viking Raiders anyway. Um, even though I think those teams are good, I was I don't like how they've done this this feud. I just want to see them wrestle. Just wrestle, just wrestle. I just want to see them fucking wrestle. <laughs> Like, like, show me I, how to wrestle. I just like I I want to see them wrestle. I each just other. want I just to, want to see them wrestle each other. Straight up, like, wrestle. It's been two months, and technically, the Raw Tag Team Championships have not been defended at all. They should technically be stripped of those championships. Yeah, if we're, we if we're follow, really we going still by the thirty day rule, we still follow the thirty day rule. Well, unless you're Brock <laughs> Lesnar. Well, uh, either way, at least we haven't gone to the VR stuff. I just got a VR. Helmet uh, dropped off, so that's what I'm wearing right Zorg, now. Zorg, yes. there is VR. There is VR. <laughs> there is you VR. do realize? No, you do realize you can watch pay per views in VR. Oh no, I I do, and I actually I think that company got sold to Apple, and I don't know if they're still doing that anymore. Because <laughs> ah, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> uh, the next VR, right? Yeah. Yep. So um, yeah, hey, I'll, I'll go see if that app's still on when I uh, load up this uh, Samsung uh, S9. I saw I saw some of a match uh, while the Access one yeah. year. It's a lot of fun. It is no, it is fun, and I, I've watched some of those too in the in the VR. It, it was just we, I, well, I had the older uh, Samsung, so it was a little hard to watch them for long periods of time. And, and so the ones you watched, they were like edited down and everything. Is it is that correct? Nope. No, you had nope. like the full matches. Mm -hmm. So they only put on the like like a, in a, in a day or two, they'll put on basically like 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 less than ten minute versions of most of the matches. So oh. Yeah, and it's uh, it's actually it's like 180, and they're they're like, hey, we'll be up on um, uh, the top of the the turnbuckle uh for one match, and then we'll be like down on the uh, uh, uh the camera down by uh the barrier when they go outside or something, right? So it it was it was it's really interesting. I mean, it was kind of an interesting experiment, and hey, they're always kind of pushing for stuff like that and figure out what's the new interesting thing going on. So. Well, let's th we'll talk a little bit more about we're going to talk about wrestling production a lot tonight, I think, because that's I mean, s some of us are kind of production nerds here uh, or deal. Actually, no, everyone here deals in some sort of production around wrestling. Now that I think about it, at least have in some capacity in their careers. Um, so <laughs> that's an interesting turnaround. But hey. Wrestling's still going on uh, in some fashion, or at least you can go back and check out stuff you missed over at IndieWrestling.us, IndieWrestling.network. That's where uh, you can go subscribe to the Indie Wrestling Network. Five ninety nine a month. You have a seven day free trial. Catch up on a lot of the stuff going on over there. Uh, just posted a new Premier uh, Championship Wrestling out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, from November. And uh, so go, please go check that out. Um, I know Atticus is. I think Atticus is, is the champion at the time there. Atticus Koger definitely. If you have not checked out Atticus, uh, it, maybe you've heard of the four four zero with him and Gregory Iron and Ricky Shane Page and that crew. Uh, tearing it up, but he's doing some great stuff in Cleveland in general, and the other the rest of the crew, including the the entire lineup of Prospect Pro Wrestling, uh, in in the training sessions are happening on the Indie Wrestling uh, US YouTube page and on the Prospect Pro Wrestling Facebook page as well. A lot of great stuff, a lot of great interviews. 
Um, and also, you can check out the Indie Mayhem Show podcast over there. Again, we're having a lot of great discussions. We're having a discussion with uh, uh, Drake Braddock that we recorded last week, Wrestling with Depression, uh, that's actually going to go up on the feed this Thursday. So keep a look, keep an eye out for all of that stuff. I'm going to get this thing off of my head because this is getting really weird and I can't hear things on my headphones. So, <laughs> uh, speaking of which, you know, the training sessions, uh, uh, Tony, you were there. We did a lot of stuff. Um, and it was kind of a different, uh, environment in general, uh, putting those, those, that show together. And of course you guys just did the, uh, quarantine bracket this past weekend, revealing, uh, what's going on with prospect pro wrestling. Uh, it, was that the first, um, um, pre tape situation of like that, that you've dealt with as a commentator? Uh, yeah, uh, in, in professional wrestling, that's the first time I've had to deal with a situation like that. But luckily or unluckily, because I, I guess I didn't learn how to reshoot the match except for the one we had to, to redo. You know, we <laughs> and that one's fun. That one was a blast. I don't, oh, I don't yeah. know how many. Oh, yeah, it was. A, it was although, a, it, we sit, we, although I still think we need to keep the original commentary. I, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, um, uh, no, it, it, that that was such a <laughs> blast to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's a long, it's, that was a long day. That mm -hmm. was, uh, eight hours, uh, six, six hours shooting and like eight hours of like prep time plus get, you know, travel to and from, yeah. and, and that's a long time. But the thing that stood out to me while we were doing it was how passionate everyone was. Like this was the first time in a while that they had all been able to get in a ring and just work and just do what they love doing. And I fed off that and doc fed off that. And then we brought some of the, the guys to the third mic and they, they did some commentary too. And then, you know, talking to them and it just felt, it felt so refreshing to be back mm -hmm. even even if it was for that moment and we were gonna have to go back and and we were we were making new stuff yeah and as yeah. a creative person making new stuff is what anyone who works in the wrestling industry really should strive to do is make good new stuff every time they can and, and of course, we've been doing a lot of stuff with you, Tony, and, and Doc, and Church between the RWA shows, the watch-alongs with 2PW, uh, and there's other stuff that we've been doing across India Wrestling with other promotions, just trying to keep um, things happening in general while we can't get people in a ring or anything like that. Uh, so so it, you've... Uh, I, I think you've expressed to me you're 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 tired of talking on a microphone from your home on the Google Meet <laughs> every <laughs> every weekend. I mean, I'd love, I'd love to go back. I, I, yeah, I yeah. really would love to go back. Even like, you know, anyone who's been doing RWA show knows that right now, if we were going to do an RWA show, it would be 174 degrees and in oh, West yeah. Noon Gym, oh, yeah. uh, it would be awful. We'd be sweating, and I'd love every second of it mm -hmm. uh, because the fans would feed off of it. And, and you know, I'd get booed and called Billy Kool Aid and and have stuff thrown at me, and maybe or maybe get physically threatened. And and those things all are are awesome things that I feed off of maybe threaten me less, but you know, whatever. Um, I did threaten a five year old, so I guess I got it coming to me. But yeah, that's all gonna be they're, they're gonna remember when we come back about that part. So oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Now is it is it gonna be harder though with like you know, like with the the two PW thing, what was kind of nice about it is it was pretty self contained mm -hmm. what we were doing. So it wasn't like Oh, you had to remember the angles from four months ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas I imagine RWA might be like it might get a little trickier as things start back up. But it's like, what are we? What were we doing? Where, again? where were we? I, it, well, I think that's going to be yeah. depending on how long <laughs> it takes for certain companies. Uh, we there was there was new rules that came out this week. Some companies are trying to yeah. do shows, and then others just are folding for until further notice, basically. Uh, and yeah. then it's like, who's coming back? Who's yeah. not coming back? Who yeah, can yeah. Come back? You know, there's, like, there's been expressions yeah. about people coming back, maybe not right away, but eventually. And, and, and then others mm -hmm. are still like, we're we, you know we're doing a wait and see. And it is this is a this is new territory, and 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 some probably don't want to be the first one to make the mistakes out there, right? I mean, I think that's why you're seeing measured responses, uh, you know, by by certain companies doing different things. So um, that, you know, it, it's it's it's, you know, every, everybody's going to attack the situation differently. Uh, so they'll be interesting to see. I mean, we're I mean, at this month, we're doing 
uh, between the two PW and Fight Underground is going to be doing recordings this weekend again, an online kind of affair, um, and that creates new opportunities. You know, so it shows if this happens, if this keeps happening, because we literally don't know anything that was planned in July still may not happen at this point where we're at. Hell, WWE still may not happen at this point as we learned today. Uh, so I mean, that shows how I've- volatile the situation is. But I think that's exciting, especially coming in like like me, who's uh, I, I mean, I'm not even two years in on commentary. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, so you you were there day one when I was day one. Green oh, when brass. you were here. OK. Yeah. Me. No, my day one, not yes. your day one. Your day <laughs> one was in 72 or something. What? Um, How old it was you a think different I am? day one. What yeah. the hell? <laughs> it was bc um yeah, no shit. so so uh, this is all part of a learning process and i'm still learning and that's the best part of professional wrestling is it, it allows you mm. even as a non-wrestling personality to learn every time you do to do something with the train sessions i had to learn how to forget in a in a single microcosm, everything while still remembering it because you still have to remember <laughs> that there's heat between, you know, Joey Moses and uh, Rev. You still have to mention that Rev Ron Hunt. You have to still kind of mention that there's some, but that it's not going on right now. Yeah, this yeah. is a different, separate entity. But those things are still there. Yeah. Oh, when RWA kicks off, we still have to do during this 64 team challenge. We still have to mention that there's guys like like uh, Rev and and uh, Ryan Edmonds who still have beef that they have to set. Mm. Uh, Joe Rosa, Justin Idol, guys like that. Th- there's still stories that need to be played out. And the the RWA things that uh, that's been uh, this, there a mad genius is behind uh, uh, pulling that thing together. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, hey, let's do a show, and they're like, let's do a 64 man interactive bracket tournament. I'm like, okay, and I'm like, oh god, it's going to be July before we're done with this thing. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, that's been a lot of fun too. But that you know, and it's a whole different kind of thing that's being done to kind of again just give something for the fans to talk about and interact with and everything. And that's how and, and that ends up with Tony in a dress dancing on cue. Uh, that's that's where we go. Ignoring the dress thing, I do have to say this. All the Pittsburgh, the, the local independent companies right now during the quarantine have all done unique things, which Absolutely. I think is amer- like, like, and I work for two of two of the several that I'm thinking of. So, you know, to my horn, own horn here, the commentary for 2PW and RWA has been top notch, um, especially color. And so, but the other companies are doing really interesting things too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so none of us are yoinking each other's styles we're all doing new things so yeah you watch you watch fight society or, or fight underground and yeah and you're interested in that you see what rise is doing and yeah and their story and, the, and you're the, interested <laughs> in that because it's not what you're doing i say rise with a y like they are doing fire pro video game shows with all their rise talent and the rise Just talent idiots. is is cutting promos on these matches that are happening being simulated on fire pro wrestling on playstation it's fantastic i i've i've seen some some a little bit of the matches some of the promos like the intro video it's great and it's a great way and they're using their patreon too which gives them something to uh you know the fan base to buy into to support the company too in the meantime which is smart um it, it, you know it, yeah it's 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 awesome but if, if fight underground who has not had a single match yet has a following <laughs> to the point where I think somebody in Illinois is copying their style uh, that we discovered that lately. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Don't talk about them. They'll disappear. Cause I, I don't know what the fuck they're doing out there, but anyways. Um, <laughs> so, so there's that. I, so an interesting uh, uh, exchange I had on Twitter last night as somebody was sharing a documentary with a lot of familiar faces. Um, I, I want to share. Uh, so if you go on uh, Amazon prime, there's a, documentary by jb destiny who who's part of actually the fight society or fight underground council um did a documentary a few years ago so there's some familiar faces like there's some lee moriarty in there christian black uh, uh quinn magnum guys like that over on amazon prime but uh but, but but conversation beyond that i asked how california wrestling was going and then he said some groups are doing drive-in shows that's it in all of california it's a big fucking state. Well, uh, yeah, California, their cases started to go back up. Did they? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what their athletic commission situation is out there. So, um, And then here, we're on the edge of West Virginia, where it's just anything goes, apparently. 
So it's a no man's land. It's a no man's <laughs> land. It's a no. It's a no man's re- land, but it's an all wrestling land apparently. So yeah. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see how all that shakes out. You know, I I I, there, I, I just see more. Comp- I I just it's inevitable. I a Pittsburgh company, I believe, will cross the border and do a live show there. I just think it's I, gonna happen. I I feel like you're probably right. Um, I don't know which company. Uh, you'll you'll know before and you'll tell me. Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, so, we'll let you know where to show up, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, no, I I I I know it's frustrating, and the coronavirus, COVID nineteen, has been a pain in the the ass to everyone. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, my, yeah. Myself included. But the fact that all the companies like none of none of for the majority part none of the companies really like gave it a second thought of oh, well how is this going to affect me the first thought for everyone that i talked to was how do we protect the fans how do we protect the the wrestlers yes so that gives me hope I, I tell Sorg this every once in a while, and I'll, I'll tell now the entire world that's listening to this. Uh, working in independent wrestling saved my love for professional wrestling because I was hating everything that was going on. Um, and, you know, so, you know, pro wrestling does save lives. What's up, Juggernaut? Um, you know, pro wrestling does save lives if you find your niche in it. Yeah. Um, so from that, speaking on the local level to kind of a more, well, I guess California, uh, at least by coastal here. So the news came out, you know, staying with kind of current eventy kind of things and the effects on wrestling and why we're having the kinds of discussions we just had in the first part, because that's how we get wrestling now. Um, it was officially announced, uh, that, uh, somebody at the performance center was tested with COVID-19. I saw an article today in passing that it looks like Mojo Raleigh was also t- tested positive. Um, to the point where here we're on Tuesday, it is June 16th and, uh, they actually canceled their tapings for today, which from what I read, uh, was at least two, two episodes and they didn't disclose what they were, but two programs were to be filmed today. Um, I think it was Raw and SmackDown. You think it was going to be Raw, like what next week's Raw and SmackDown? Yep. So this is. And I think this is back in April when we talked about what WWE was doing in AEW. Like, in and how this conversation happens with indie wrestling, this is inevitable, right? Uh, with everything that's going on, uh, well, we felt at least. Um, and it, it was kind of, it was kind of a when's the other foot going to drop? And it feels like it's dropping. And and I can't remember if we talked about it on the show, but I was kind of concerned when Triple H is we're going to start testing two weeks ago said we are going to start testing for this for the people that come in here um all the cleaning procedures all the temperature checks all of that kind of stuff um you know and transgenderly in pa the big thing that's allowing people to have shows is that we can sign waivers to say that we don't have it that's our that's our way into having wrestling shows without testing anything like that if you're concerned about this and obviously two people in wwe got that this, this seems kind of iffy, and I'm kind of concerned. I, what what happens to WWE here with this? Well, probably nothing because it's Florida. Um, I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, it feels like they're not going to run any shows until everyone is tested. But I mean, that can take two days. From what, what I understand, it will take like there were like forty eight hour tests or something like that. The rules in PA were were, then it all, we're going to be same. Then it also takes everybody else not going anywhere for two days or not. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. yeah, and like everyone, everyone, everyone knows lockdown. there has to stay home. Have to, have and to stay everyone home. who gets it has to then stay home for fourteen days after you're found out. Yeah. Plus, there's not a hundred percent certainty that you're quote unquote cured after those fourteen days because we still don't have enough information on the virus itself. Yeah. Yeah, and not to mention that, and not to mention that last night at Raw there were people in the crowd that weren't just NXT developmental people. Yeah, t- there so, were fa- there were family and friends in the crowd. Family and friends. So they've they've they, it looks like because AEW looked like they were doing the same thing, right? And to be clear, AEW has been testing everybody, I believe, every week for their shows. So, and that's not a hundred percent foolproof, certainly, but no. still. No. 
you're you're basically and, and then, playing with oh, fire sorry. in that situation. No, sorry, Rob. Uh, you're basically just oh, no, playing okay. with fire. WWE has been playing with fire for months right now. AEW is playing with a little bit less fire because they they are doing a lot of but but one person catches it in in such a big company in such a big production mm-hmm. the whole production can catch it yeah yeah and and it spreads like wildfire and you just look at it from the 2 pw like we had maybe two dozen people in the building yeah and if one of us would have gotten in all 24 of us would have had a situation now i i don't i think all of us are good it's been a couple weeks now and none of us have said anything so i think we're all good there <laughs> and we were getting zapped in the head every time WWE wasn't keeping up on their uh, keeping kosher. So, you know, two people yeah, have yeah. it now. Yeah. How many people are going to have it by tomorrow or the yeah. next day or the day after that? They've been playing with fire for so long because they're idiots sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and then they bring in Portrait of Health Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> they bring him in, um, you know, as this is all coming to light, let's let's bring in the oldest, like, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. how, how unhealthiest. Much Charlotte had to have been <laughs> so happy to see her dad there that day. Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> like, that being said, that angle was awesome. The, the use of her <laughs> was great. Oh, okay. I will. I, I, I will. I will fight. For this no, one. no, oh, no. Is this your I, hill? Is this your hill? No. Let me wait. wait, wait let, let, let's hear his hill. Let's hear his stance <laughs> okay. on this, please. Okay, so if this is the direction you're going with Randy, Mm -hmm. there are three people in professional wrestling that know Randy better than anyone else, and Mm -hmm. that is Triple H, Dave Bautista, Ric Flair. One of them arguably would be the one that goes, this is an unhinged Randy this is the unstoppable Randy that we recruit into evolution. So you go back a 15 year, 20 year storyline. Mm-hmm. It makes sense for a Ric Flair or a Hunter or a Batista to do that. And in their mind, do it to save someone. You know, I'm sure Ric Flair will cut a phenomenal promo next time raw films, which might be 2021 at this point, but it will be a great promo. <laughs> Explain that he did to save Christian. Yeah, yeah. But all right, that's my help. And, okay, that that and, that, and that's and, and I get what they're doing. I understand what they're doing. It's Christianity versus evolution. I got it. I got it. <laughs> but well, now that you put it that way, I wow. don't like it as much. <laughs> Should that be the T-shirt? No, <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I can't. I saw that joke somewhere else. That one's not mine. But my here, I. Don't like, and this is this is something I've always said, and it actually has new context in my brain after watching Undertaker: The Last Ride. Um, I don't want to see anyone over forty or forty-five on televised wrestling. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't want to see it because every single minute, every second of screen time taken up by someone like that, who has done a lot for the business. It takes away from building new stars. And it also, like, have you guys watched all of the Undertaker documentary? Yep, just caught up. Yeah, I caught up. It it frames the Undertaker to me in a much different light. Mm -hmm. This is a man that needs to see therapy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, like, like all of them. Yeah. All of them involved. (laughs) But no, because, like, because like the stuff they talk about, they like, they always say, "I never understood having to get up for a match. It's having to come down from a match. Mm-hmm. That's a disorder. Mm-hmm. Like, like, and that like you're just it, feeding addictions at this point th- to a point where it becomes unhealthy. So, so like, look at what Ric Flair has done to yeah, himself. Yeah, just because he can't chill." He can, he has no chill for this at all. He just like, keeps chasing it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's that it's that South Park game where you're chasing the dragon. Like it's, you're never gonna fucking catch it. But like, it's not it's like, like it's not like Rick is 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 re- now. If if Rick puts tights back on, he's okay. going to. I guarantee I hope, he's I going to. God it's he does. Edging Christian versus Rick and Randy. I guarantee that's where they're going with it. Yeah, Absolutely, I, I, a thousand percent. 
I hope you're wrong. I, I honestly, know yeah, I'm wrong. I really, right. I really hope you're wrong. No, yeah. and, but, <laughs> if that, but if that's where they're going with it, the easiest way, and I said this last night, I'll say it again. You could have done the same thing with Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Charlotte could have been the one to attack Christian. And then you could have Edge and Beth against Charlotte and Randy, which makes a hell of a lot more sense to me. Yep. 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 And it sounds like a better match, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Well, it, 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 there's a lot of interesting movements going on there, and also, uh, well, well, this is also the first uh, uh, since the the talent fi- or I'm sorry, the the uh, creative firings and and everything too. So um, we'll see. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. I'm a Paul Heyman guy. There's your, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All you need to do to get Mike's loyalty is buy him a bagel. Pretty much, and he'll buy your T-shirt and wear it on the. You're show. not wrong. No. No, you're not wrong. No, I'm not wrong. You just, you just need to be the most recent one to buy him a bag. Yes, a bagel. Yes, <laughs> I'm not even the most recent. I oh. hashtag all bagels matter. Oh, oh. Uh, my, oh okay, my DM me sad. your address. Yeah. Yeah. DM me your address later. Yeah, I'll, I'll it's gonna mail you a bagel. It's gonna... <laughs> It'll be freeze dried and still fresh within forty eight hours. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There's got, there's got to be a, there's a local Brugger's that'll deliver, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Hashtag butts for Bradley. Hashtag bagels for Mike. Yes. Yeah. There you go. That's a better hashtag. Um, <laughs> guys, uh, speaking of food that you can send locally, uh, you can you can you can get somebody's favor in the Pittsburgh area because that's where Slice on Broadway is. Slice on Broadway dot com, uh, Beachview, Pernetic, East End, PNC Park, around the Greater. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Sorry, everybody else. I know Tina's not impressed yet because it's not in Seattle. We're working on that. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get in front of your chat line because I know I, I see it every week. Uh, but anyways, um, no. But so we're in our friends that support us. Uh, feeding when we used to have guests in the studio uh, every week on the show. So and it makes me makes me uh, and make sure that I don't forget to eat on podcast day because you don't know how many times that happened before we had a wonderful sponsor on Slice on Broadway. And you think I'm wired now? You should see those days, uh, but uh, but and they're there and they're a little fuzzier and lower resolution, but they're out there. Um, but <laughs> also, I was really close to the webcam for some reason. Uh, but anyways, thank you to our friends, Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com. dot com. Let them know the mayhem sent you. You guys are gonna hear a little bit of break. We're gonna be right back with a big question, and we're gonna get to this week's homework assignment from Professor Jacob Edwin. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. This is Jason Gore, and you're listening to Wrestling Mayhem Show. Wrestling can always be filled with bad people who <laughs> draw buttloads of money, and, uh-huh. and every one of us yeah. is like, listen, favorite wrestler in the world Chris of all time, Chris Benoit. Yep. So how do you think yep. I feel? Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> life yep. sucks for me. <laughs> yeah. I can't watch a single match from my favorite wrestler without getting sick to my Feels stomach. bad. Feels bad. I'm with you. But I can remember. I can re- still remember, like, seeing the moments, seeing the radicals, seeing the WCW matches mm-hmm. and everything. Uh, I can't well, do it. It's, it, it, I, like, can't. Well, I, I remember the memories. I'm not going to go back and watch them because it's not. I can't it's even not watch, gonna... like, the triple threat. Like, WrestleMania 20 is forever, mm-hmm. and it's the greatest moment in, in modern yep. WWE history. And yep. I can't watch a second of it because nope. it makes me sick to my stomach. Yep. Not just because of what Chris did, but because of Eddie's death. And you're yep. just like, well, Don't that's even... a moment in time I can't relive. Don't even think about watching the pay per view after that. Mm. <laughs> oh, brother. So, anyways, uh, the uh, questionable decisions and people aside, uh, this is the we Wrestling have- Mayhem Show, which is probably full of those. Uh, but uh, we're here, and you're watching, and we we thank you for that. Uh, this this week, um, get creative a little bit, guys. Um, I, I kind of mentioned about uh, this uh, uh, alternative venue uh, uh, situation potentially with indie wrestling. People are trying to figure out how to do this. If you were to put, maybe this is quarantine minded. Maybe this is just, I just want to see this happen. If you were to see a wrestling show in a different type of venue than typical, where would that be? I should probably come up with my own answer for this too. Mine, I'm still working on the, dri- the driving idea personally. But uh, where where would you like to see pro wrestling that you haven't seen pro wrestling or regularly? I mean, this could be this thing that existed that you're like, I'd like to see more of that. Wait, like to watch it or to have a match exist? Uh, yes. 
in the place in the in, in a place where we can't have the typical 200 people piling into a sweaty gymnasium uh, piled onto each other to watch wrestling where else would you like to put wrestling that could be a decent alternative we're helping out the indies man we're helping out the indies what can we do where can we put wrestling to continue wrestling for the sake it. of wrestling do it I got on a lake on a lake there on was- a lake that's what I want. You you get a giant ass, you get a giant ass like um, um, piece that you put in the middle of the lake that's weighed down heavily by weights and properly constructed and everything. There's a mm-hmm. ring that's a part of it. Mm-hmm. Everyone is taken out to the ring on jet skis. Okay, I'm with you. Um, all, all the fans <laughs> in attendance are in giant inflatable tubes. Tubing. Yes, this is what I want. Um, <laughs> and and um, you call it um. Lake Ness Wrestling. Ooh. Ooh, hey. that's good. That's good. That's good. Wrestling on a pontoon. Pon- P- pontoon Palooza? No, that's... Yep, that, Pontoon Palooza, no, sure. That's, that's just a boat sail promotion. Uh, bash at the buoys? Bash at the buoys! I like this. <laughs> I like these ideas. Anybody else want to go? Anybody else? Anybody else? I was going... I was thinking... Um, hold on, hold and, on. And I, and I, Bobby said, oh. "I would not, could not on a lake. I would not, could not call it fake." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in while it was timely. Very well done, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Rob. I, I was, I was, I was thinking, and and I even mentioned, you know, we probably talked about it at the time uh, when we did that Hilltopolis thing a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. like whatever park that was, where it was like overlooking the city uh, to where the the city was yes. in the background of yes. every shot. Grandview Park. That, there like, was it was this um it was this this concert that was put together by by the guys I work with up in up in Allentown here in Pittsburgh. And yeah, it was amazing. We it was a live stream thing. We were even internet in the park, and they pulled internet in for us. And we streamed this thing. And it was the cool kids were headlining, right? And uh, yeah, plus they had people talking and stuff yeah. before that. Where I was the one shooting out you know down over that you know that angle the whole time and i remember even when i'm just like shooting people at the podium talking yeah yeah it's like holy shit you can see a lot just in the background oh, yes. <laughs> with the the, yes. the city to where it's like that would look awesome as like a backdrop for a, a show <laughs> especially as the, t- the time of day changed and you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. lights so, come on and so stuff like you that. you want it up in grandview park overlooking the city or just yeah like a place like that yeah, you know, I'm sure every city kind of has one, probably. I, I think the closest to that, and it wasn't filmed, uh, but Rise did one down at that um, music fest at um, uh, right. Highmark Field. Uh, that that you uh-huh. look across and say that would be a cool place to do, like more of a wrestling show too, um, it, mm-hmm. in, in different contexts, of course. So uh, also back up. We're still on this lake thing, by the way. Uh, Tina says that that was already done. Lex Luger <laughs> buys something. I mean, Luke Zuna on Fourth of July. That yes. Tina- Tina's yeah. responding to Dave, who said Helicarrier. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> Dave is going into the MCU for this one. Okay. And Tina yeah. thinks that the Intrepid can fly. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> I'm okay with all of these. I'm with that. I If she told me that, I believe her. So mm-hmm. We don't know that it can't. No, no, we don't. No, we, yeah, don't. we don't. We don't. There, we there, never could be, there could be a repulsor <laughs> beam in the hall. We'd never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony, Matt, do you have any... Uh, um, ideas for this would you like to see do we get do we oh take all God. the good ones i know i know well, this, this you know is... we always um mm-hmm. we always pipe dream about heinz field here in pittsburgh yes and um shooting the fireworks off the tops of the buildings in yes. downtown pittsburgh it's amazing such a beautiful mm-hmm. draft backdrop now heinz field might be a little bit of a, you know, a tall order that's a big stadium but there's a smaller venue uh up the river a little bit high stadium where our rinky dink soccer team plays and um, you basically get the same effect. You yeah. get, you know, small, mm-hmm. you know, football field size stadium, much more smaller seating capacity, same backdrop of giant buildings to shoot fireworks off of. Mm-hmm. It's basically all we're looking for is something to shoot the fireworks off of. Yeah. And uh, yeah. they look real <laughs> nice going up the tops of those buildings in downtown Pittsburgh. So, That's right. Uh, I'm all about the backdrop. It doesn't really matter where yeah. we are. So, <laughs> Plus the smaller, like if it's a scaled, yeah, you know, like smaller stadium, it just takes that that much less to fill it and make that look full there you go yep so i, I think high mark is probably my favorite answer of all of them uh because it's the one that like if you know anything about 
the owner of uh, the River Hounds. He's actually from Connellsville. Hmm. So, uh, which is right near RWA slash Rise territory. Mm -hmm. Um, So, um, Tuffy, if you are listening to this, and I don't know why you would be, but if someone wants to send this to Tuffy, who is the owner of uh, the River Hounds, um, I know some people. There you go. So, but, uh, you know, selfishly, my backyard, because I have a a nice (laughs) acre, uh, (laughs) unselfishly, I think a, a cornfield that we would hollow out for a ring and we would just give very, <laughs> very vague directions to it. And if you find it, you can watch. But if you I, can't find it, the rage you'll, you'll, in the what, what about, what oh. about old timey wrestlers just appearing out of the, <laughs> <laughs> out yeah. of the field? If you, and, <laughs> and, and we have run in <laughs> where they come directly from yeah. the cornfield. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I love it. The ring of dreams. Yeah. 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 See, it would be the ring of dreams. Have, it would be the ring of dreams. That's the one where you yeah. can have all your legendary wrestlers just wrestle. Just yeah. get them all there. Yeah. Like every like no one under 45. It's a lot to be yeah. at that show. If, yeah. if you show if you show up to that show, you can watch it live, and if not, you can watch it on indiewrestling.us, yes. seven day free yeah. trial. Exactly. <laughs> oh, tagline, tagline. If you build it, they will fight. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, I, see, I like I, I like where your where your head's at. Um, I, you can yeah. take that you know further stream. You got to do the Speakeasy Wrestling event where you mm-hmm. find the venue. And you do zero yep. advertising, <laughs> and you basically it becomes like the secret that you tell everybody. You know, uh-huh. come down. that was basically so Matt, Vir- Matt, Virgil, Virgil was still yeah. end up there somehow, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was basically yeah, how yeah. Alter Bar did all their concerts when I was a kid. Like no advertising, and you would just show up, and a concert would be there, and you didn't know who was playing. Sometimes it was a dinky band. Sometimes Fall Out Boy would show up, I and you're like just like, oh, oh wow, okay. <laughs> I, but, I, I like this idea. I you know so. There was um, uh, talking with Glenn Spector and uh, and Potter last week on on the Indie Mayhem show, and reading the Devil Budokan book. I was not aware, uh, gentleman Joe Perry, who actually just passed in in recent weeks here in Pittsburgh. Uh, May he rest in peace, a legend. Absolutely, uh, but he ran these outlaw shows in the late '90s, early 2000s, which were not. I, I guess they weren't state commissioned. They, and it was basically that effect. <laughs> that it was the secret shows, and all the wrestlers showed up and the right the, people know the right people know some fans mm-hmm. will show up you you'll you'll get paid uh but i i think that was part of like you'll, you'll still get paid no matter what and it was just another thing for people to like the wrestlers to have a chance to wrestle and ha- you know grow and, and 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 do that whole thing um like this is like a piece of pittsburgh history i was not aware of you know these these secret shows but with like pretty legitimate names as far as like just people in pittsburgh wrestling right um so like, like that's kind of the speakeasy wrestling isn't it and this was like in penn hills or something i think they were doing this so sounds it, like it, 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 it probably it, oh, money by not paying the commission so yeah yeah, yeah. It probably a good deal here's what you do <laughs> you have the speaky the front of the speakeasy be a vhs rental store and you call the store tape traders Oh Ooh. wow! We just bringing it back, man. Bringing it yeah. back. That, that, because those who know know, and they'll be like, "Hmm, let me mosey on Can- into this VHS store." Even though I don't have a VACR, let's see. That's weird. <laughs> Copy of UK Rampage ninety six on ninety two on its side. Pull. There's a ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we? And then I convert all of the shows to DVD. Okay, got it, got it. Because yeah, I'm not dealing with oh, dubbing you VHSs. You have to deconvert them. You have to deconvert them to VHS. Oh, I'm not doing what's that. The, that. That was what's literally the last. What's the last blockbuster doing in in Alaska? I think. Uh, no, I think it's the, there. I think it's Nebraska. Is it Nebraska or Alaska? I think, no, I didn't think there were any more in the U.S. I thought there I, is. No, there's I a one, there's one in Oregon still. There's Isn't there one, one in Oregon? Oregon? There is only one, one in the U.S. Oh, this, hold on. This is I, how mystery it is. We can't figure out what state or, it's in. But there's only like, like Montana or something. Answer. I thought that. I thought John Oliver told me it's that. It's in one. Oregon. It's in Oregon. It is in Oregon. Oh man. Okay. Yes. Oh man. Thank you. Do so, they still have um uh the jock strap from? Gladiator, they have to. Right? They're the, yeah, they're the one that, that was the Alaska. Right? That was the Alaska one, I think. 
but no, yeah, but I, it think had to go somewhere. That, I think they sent all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. That's fantastic. Anyways, so with um, that, here's some from ideas. From the, from the chat room, we yes. had a couple of responses. Uh, Tina said at the Derby, like Churchill Downs would be interesting. Ooh. Uh, we could reunite the four horsemen. Uh, mm. mm -hmm. Which four um, horsemen? Any pick, as long as Mongo's <laughs> there, that turned into glue. As, as long as Mongo's there, mm -hmm. Mongo's gotta be there. What will Mongo do next? Is and, my favorite thing currently on oh, on yes. the internet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I didn't think anything would get by uh, Rick Rick Rude taking uh, atomic drops. And and Podner says uh, we could have it at a NASCAR track. Hmm. Mm, that's a lot of room. That's, that's a lot of room. You get tall order. But see, My here's God. the thing: if you have it at a NASCAR event, you can only work the left. Mm, oh, but wait, that's uh, how I'm it, leaving. I Bye. think that's how. Bye, Russell. everyone. <laughs> Bye. Yay! And Tony just got introduced. To First me. time, last time. <sighs> got it. Good <laughs> lord. So that means so that means that means you can't long time book, listener, never calling again. That means you can't book any lucha wrestlers. Somebody out there is gonna get that. <laughs> right? <laughs> they work from the right. Everybody sort else works from the left. It's what sort it's what it's we we got it. Okay. We, Okay. Are we live Do I need Matt Hardy to explain this? <laughs> Are we live stuff? <laughs> events must be documented. Getting color is when you bleed in a match. If it's unintentional, it is a hard way. I love the Matt Hardy explaining wrestling terms on being the elite. It's the greatest fucking thing ever. It's it's the only good thing on being the elite right now. Oh, oh. Man. Listen, man. Hey, man. You go two hundred episodes, or oh, we, we have seven hundred episodes, and keep it all fresh. Or we have a late edition, and I actually really love this uh, from Arlene in the chat room. Oh. Since Allegheny, since Allegheny County pools will be closed this summer, drain a pool, <laughs> set up a ring, and have oh my god, wait, watch ball sitting around the edge of the pool, dangling their legs. <sighs> I oh, sort of wow. it. I sort. <laughs> yes. Mineral Beach here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh. It's this old, like, I don't know if it used to be a wave pool or what, but it is drained and it is empty. The weeds are already growing in. This place will do anything. I, that, that is the spot right there. Oh, that is man. a RWA presents. Matt, that was, exact, that, was, that was exactly where I was thinking because we drive past it all the time to go to South Hills Village. So yeah. that is exactly where I was thinking. I Clear the weeds out. We, uh, you know, we make a pitch perfect riff off joke oh, to yeah. bring in the younger ah, crowd. Yes. It's perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, in a Kendrick. Call the show. The deep end. RWA presents the deep end. Let's do that. Take it, yep. Derek. Off the deep Take end. It. Yeah. Off the deep end. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so good. Don't feel bad. That's it. That's it. All right, well, I think we've uh, solved all the problems of professional wrestling in pe in the Pennsylvania area <laughs> yeah. with this segment. I'm glad you're to see welcome. You're welcome. In an abandoned pool. I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut out this clip, and I'm going to tag every promotion in the area. Sorry, Take these ideas. Tag every promotion everywhere. Yes. You know AEW will put a fucking match in a pool. Yeah, man. Tag GCW, man. I'll call them down. GCW, AIW. Tag, tag New Japan. Tag New Japan. Why Make not? Tag happen. Impact. AIW Impact doesn't need help. They have their backyard parties. I think one of those is going down. So, <laughs> Impact is actually doing better now than they were when they were TNA funded oh, by yeah. Panda oh, Energy. Yeah. Oh, doing, oh, God. Right. They are. Well, I they are. talk about something from Impact for a second. Real quick, because we got to get to our lesson. Yeah. Um, I have not watched Impact. Okay. Um, because they still have me blocked on Twitter. Okay. However, they do not have me blocked <laughs> on Periscope. <laughs> They do not have okay. me blocked on Periscope. Okay. And I saw that they had a stream going, and the image was of Taya relaxing at home. So I'm like, oh, well, that gets my interest. This Taya's is character in Impact is fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely... She's just, like, home, like, Skyping with all of her girlfriends, and Holly Meow from Lucha Underground is there, like, <laughs> Everything about it was great. Mm -hmm. It was just fantastic, and she was, it was like the real housewives of Impact Wrestling. I'm like, <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> Do they still make allusions yeah. that she's married to uh, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Oh yeah, no, she definitely is. Yeah, like, absolutely. Well, I know she is. Just but John, I just wondered if there was like, John, well, Johnny was in it, Impact. Yes, he was Johnny Impact. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, but it was like it was just great. It was really funny, and like Rosemary was on it, being weird. Mm-hmm. It was like a whole just long like video package thing. It was very weird. I enjoyed it, but still not going to watch their product because they blocked me. Uh, jeez. Jeez, man. All right, guys. We have our homework assignment from last week. Uh, the professor, Jacob Edwin, taking us to sun- summer school now with these assignments, and that assignment was the famous ladder match, championship match for the Undisputed title from July 1st, 2002, Monday Night Raw. Uh, that was our assignment. Uh, watch this today. I sat in the park and watched this. It was a great time. Um, this this is this is a fond memory. And I think mm-hmm. it, we expressed when this was announced last week. This is a fond memory. Um, uh, this, this was more of a one-sided match than I remember it being. What's that? It was way more of a one-sided match than I remember it being. Yeah, yeah, a, a little bit, a little bit. But um, but there was like it was one of those. Hey, Jeff Hardy could do this, and I think they were still. Basically, uh, Matt, Matt and Jeff doing whatever, you know, at the time, right? Uh, well, I think this was before yeah, Jeff I had think, of his problems, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they were just coming off of getting murdered by Brock Lesnar every week oh. for you know, <laughs> however long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. were coming off of that. Didn't they just get split, too? They just got split. It was like uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. Okay. A few yeah. weeks prior, something like that. Yeah, the, the first draft yeah. or the second draft. one. One of the brand extensions split up the Hardy Boys, mm-hmm. like, and Matt, I think, was hadn't even started version one yet. Yeah, version one was only like a, I think and, it was like a couple months out still. Mm-hmm. I and think they I had just become WWE. The, yeah, like this was like right at the brand, like the the name change too. Mm-hmm. So, so what do you guys think? How 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 is this playing out versus uh, what we've been watching? Um, you know, what 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 are your thoughts on the, on the match itself? Oh, it was great. Mm-hmm. It was, every everything was there. The I I still get a little squeamish now when I see chair shots right to the head. Oh yeah, especially there were some there were some bangers in that. But the one sound of like and and this will be forever. The, like as soon as we got this assignment last week, the first thing that popped in my head was Jim Ross's call of make your go on kid, make yourself famous. And then the loudest gunshot like chair shot to the back you've ever heard. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, I'm like, that was instantly what came in my brain. Like, and still plays. Mm-hmm. And it <laughs> proves American Badass Undertaker is the best Undertaker. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I jump in and, and just add on to that? Because mm-hmm. there is so much good stuff here. For this match, and I, you know, you're talking about Jeff Hardy really being able to work the David versus Goliath style really well. Uh, you know, Taker showed up with his work pants on for oh, that yeah. match. Oh yeah. Um, just I re- there's there's a there's a sequence where he's beating down um, overhands on Jeff, and Jeff gets the comeback and just starts throwing flourishes, and then Taker clobbers him and just cracks him. But then Taker like st- says and and mothers to himself. And of course, this is 2002. There's no mics. No one's picking this up. So he's doing this just for the camera, on the hard side. And he's going, "Holy shit!" That like he's shaking. Like those were some punches. Mm-hmm. Taker Taker is showing up. He's bumping exactly how you know to make someone who is a tag team specialist who's becoming a single wrestler. If you need someone to help you become a superstar. Taker was do did that, and that's a lot of respect that Taker shows there to bump that way. The chair shots to the head, especially the one from the last ride where Hardy pops down, grabs the chair, comes back up, cracks him. That's rough. Uh, Jeff Hardy with perfect ragdoll physics, and then <laughs> the ending and the the climb your kid Jr. Oh, God, I miss this Jr. I miss this Jr. Oh, so yeah. much. Yeah, this was this was a raw. There's a main event on Raw. And I felt like Jr. Yeah. was calling WrestleMania. This is and, was and so King good. was on point too. Yeah. King was on point perfectly as the and, you know coming as as the heel color over here. I'm yeah. listening to to King and he's just doing it perfectly to the point where he's when he's climbing the ladder and climb the ladder, kid, make yourself famous. 
King has panic in his voice because he's seeing Undertaker <laughs> about to lose this title. Like he believes, and then Taker comes in with the chair shot from gunpowder. And you know, but it's just so well choreographed and thought out and called in the match and and just brilliant and then the post match with the i'm still standing all that stuff mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know just this is a match that i think is probably one of my tops top five matches uh just from a storytelling aspect if you are a smaller wrestler uh watching this match and understanding how to do a david versus goliath match is so and how to call one for me how to call a david versus goliath match um this is the blueprint matt what about you uh i think um i'm not as high on this match as everyone else is but Mm -hmm. um we'll point out that um i i I will state up front undertaker in this period is freaking awesome um but the bit where he has the match won like five minutes in and he's like starts to climb the ladder and he stops and he gets back down so he can just beat up Jeff some more. That's bull crap. It's always bull crap. <laughs> when you've got the match won, but you just want to beat him up some more. When you pull the guy up, it, I mean, I guess sometimes it works. But to, to me, I'm always just like, ah, oh, give me a break. Like, like Jeff's beaten, and Undertaker just, you know, decides, I'm going to go down here and beat him up, up some more. And, you know, as it goes on, it goes on. And the other thing is, like, this – Weird, like, WWE logic, and it happens a ton during this period in WWE where you can get just obliterated by The Undertaker, just, like, beaten up, killed, buried, tombstone, choke slam, whatever. But if he comes back and he pats you on your head, <laughs> you got elevated. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, did you? Like, did, like, did, this, <laughs> did this help Jeff at all in the long run? Now, I know there's some extenuating circumstances uh, when it comes to Jeff Hardy, but I don't know. Part of that was kind of like, it, it, it just reminds me so much of like so many other things we see like that with Undertaker, especially once he jumps over to SmackDown, you see him go through this routine with Cena. And then you see him go through this routine with other guys who you never hear from again, but you know, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just and, kind of, it, it's interesting. And And on the other side too, it's like with Hardy, it's like, this was happening to him once every year or every two years mm-hmm. until years later when it finally stuck, you know, and, and mm-hmm. he, you know, and, or, or even after he'd gone to TNA and been back, you know, and it, where it was yeah. like, okay, where he was finally like a serious contender, you yeah. know? Yeah. I, I, but, th- but, but and, it, uh, and I, I, I understand why the people in the, I remember watching this match when it happened yeah. and I understand why the people in that arena believe that Jeff Hardy was going to win that match. Cause I've been in arenas where mm-hmm. a title change was definitely not going to happen, but I convinced myself that it was going to happen. But me <laughs> sitting at home, I never thought Jeff Hardy was winning that match. Not even when he was yeah. climbing that ladder for the last time. But that being said, Undertaker is awesome. Jr. and the King accurately are in all time form on this match. They are awesome. Bickering. The bickering is so good in this <laughs> match is like, Kings like Needle and Jr. and just like, how can you how can you feel bad for him? He, he brought this on himself. He's the one who challenged the Undertaker, and Jr. is just finally like, well, I, I, nobody deserves to get beaten up. Like, it's just I love when like the King would just like back Jr. into a corner where it's just like there's no escape, and Jr. can just be just like, ah, you know. <laughs> When Jr. gets he- like like to the point where he goes off play by play and starts doing a brief rant of color, like that's <laughs> when you know it's a serious thing. And that's when like the tempo picks up and Jr. in, in the late nineties, early two thousands was perfect at timing those right when the crescendo was coming up. So he timed them perfectly to the end of the heel beat down to the face crescendo. And it was just, it just helped build on the commentary side. I remember watching this match live as a kid uh, at, at 12. So like, I remember this match. Yes, I'm, I was 12 when this match happened. And I thought Jeff Hardy was going to win the Undisputed. I was dead set on it because I thought he had it. It's a ladder. Jeff Hardy's a ladder specialist. He can climb the ladder faster. I forgot no wrestler in, in recorded history moves slower than when they're trying to climb a ladder. But, <laughs> you know, these things, you you buy in. And I bought in. And and. It, Looking back on this match made me so happy because my my 
disheveled, angry self looks back on this with 12 year old eyes. And mm-hmm. I just lit up like a Christmas mm-hmm. tree watch. Or so. It was a good moment. I loved it. There's still a lot to like about it. The yeah. other thing that was funny about this match, um, the reckless nature of like ladder and table spots around this period where mm-hmm. like, if you watch it, you watch a match today and they will like position the table, like to the exact point If it's off by like a skosh. They'll like scoot that table a little bit. This one, this match early on, Jeff Hardy just like puts the table, puts the ladder on top of the Undertaker, climbs the steel steps, and just jumps off. It's just yeah. like, what are one, we doing? One, I don't one know. One last thing: <laughs> two ladders, two ladders in this match. The short yeah. ladder used for all the spots, and the big ladder for the climbing. Not thirty thousand ladders, not a wooden ladder spray painted to look silver. Two ladders, and they're working exactly with two ladders and really they're only working with one because the other one's just for climbing purposes <laughs> and, and, and it's were, not up a lot really, they were really creative with the, the ladders too i loved when he uh when taker did the big boot on the the ladder and like pushed it into jeff who was in the ring when taker was on the outside it was cool stuff so good match i don't want to sell it short i'm pretty sure i remember hearing like an interview with taker i think it might have been even on the uh the this is my yard DVD, where he was like, I'd never been in a ladder match before, so yeah. I kind of let Jeff run the show on that. Which, yeah, you know, if that's like <laughs> if that's what happened, that, that takes a lot of trust. Mm-hmm. That's ringing yeah. praises. I've ever heard one because yeah. you know, if if Undertaker's coming to you and saying, Yeah, book it up, oh, it might, <laughs> I, I, by the way, I might but, also be confusing it with Ric Flair at Edge, but I, I know. Uh, I, I thought I heard with Taker and Jeff Hardy too. Mm. So. But you could tell by the way Taker is performing in that match that he is trying to do his best for Jeff Hardy to make him, you know, make it a big match for Jeff. So absolutely. One one last small thing, and uh, sorry, Sork. Uh, no one looked cooler in the world in 2002 than Undertaker with the undisputed title wrapped around his neck, driving his motorcycle back up the ramp. <laughs> no one in recorded <laughs> history has ever looked cooler. I still <laughs> wish I could pull that look off. Because no version one else of Taker. Off. Absolutely. The best Absolutely. version I, of Taker I, and I'm the most underrated that. looking championship. I am. I am. A, it's. I don't think it's underrated. I oh, think that I is, love the undisputed uh, second, championship. Second best behind Big Gold. But yeah, it's just it, well, it just wasn't around long at all. That's no, all. right. But it doesn't. That doesn't make yeah. it underrated. Like no. yeah, I know. But it's underseen. Yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, that I'll take. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it's definitely one of my favorite belts. Um, so that was our assignment, and we are going to get another one from Professor one Jacob good. Edwin. Uh, Tony, I know you're very familiar with the professor. Mm-hmm. Let's hear it. Hmm? All right. So here we go. Our next assignment. My name is Professor Jacob Edwin here again with the Wrestling Mayhem Show's weekly assignment. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Jacob Edwin, and you can find uh, merchandise online at prowrestlingtees.com slash Jacob Edwin. So we're going to stay within the last 20 years because that seems to be where everybody can keep up. Otherwise, I get told uh, nobody got my assignment and that I shouldn't be, uh, maybe I should pick better matches or something like that. These are all good matches. Don't don't get me wrong. I no, believe firmly in these assignments. So uh, we're going to stay in really 2008. <laughs> it's going to be April 14th, 2008. On Raw, it'll be the defending women's champion, Beth Phoenix, against Mickey James. They had a lot of matches. They had a lot of matches this year and years after and years prior. These are two women that were potentially before their time uh, that you could absolutely just plug into today's roster uh, on any show, and they would really be able to, to shine and to stand out. Uh, I think Beth Phoenix especially, only because uh, Mickey James did come back a few years ago and had a pretty so fun run, to say the least. So yeah. uh, I want you to watch this with the sound on. Uh, a lot of people make the mistake of watching matches without sound, and I want you to make sure the sound is on and you're paying attention to how the crowd is reacting to these two because the crowd has seen this match. Uh, they'll see it many more times afterwards as well, but they are still invested. And uh, it may be something of a slow build, but... It's it's worth it. It's worth hearing the reaction all the way up until the very end. And you want to hear the commentators as well, because the commentators, 
JR and King, they, they've they seen a lot and they should know what's coming just based on experience, but they obviously didn't see uh, what was going to happen next. So make sure to enjoy and study up and thank you. There you go. It is Mickey James and uh, Beth Face. I, I, that, th- this was like some of the glimmers of hope for the women's division in the late 2000s, I recall. Mm-hmm. It, it was kind of the tail end of that really good. Like, that was a little after, like, Trish and Lita had left, right? I think so. And it hadn't, and it, and it hadn't yet become just all the, I mean, Diva Search might have been done by this point. But just, there was that void of, <laughs> of a few years, kind of, where you had, I mean, you had Beth Phoenix around, but then it was also, like, Candice Michelle and, and or, what? People that didn't right. really make much of an impact. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. This was, this, there. this was the period where the last vestiges of your, your Trish's, your Lita's, your Victoria's, yeah. your, were heading out the door. Mickey was part of that, that crew of four that, that crushed it in the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. And this is sort of the last vestige before the Divas era shows up. And then, of course, we all remember when AJ Lee busts that door down and, uh, started the Divas Revolution and never gets enough credit for the fact that she was the first person to start the Divas Evolution slash Revolution. Mm-hmm. She was the one who started it. Oh, she gets great on this show. Oh, yeah. Oh, her, 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 and, her Paige and Emma. That's it. Yes. That's the list. Mm-hmm. Or and, Emma. And I, and I will <laughs> say, I will say the Bella Twins were a part of it, but not for the reasons that they think. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not for the not for the reasons but, that we are told, and not for the reasons that they probably think. Ugh. Like, or or even like speaking of like Beth Phoenix, it's like she it's it's almost like her most remembered stuff was with like Santino, you know, things. It didn't have a lot to do with the the wrestling part. So, of it, you know what I mean? So unfortunate because yeah. I remember when yeah. she debuted and she was a killer. Mm-hmm. She was a mm-hmm. killer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. She came but in with yeah, hype, like, too. So like, was... People knew who she was when she came in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even, even uh, sort of casuals like me like knew the name. Yeah. So we'll get into that next week. So everybody study up. Give that a watch. Uh, lastly, as we usually close the show, guys, real quick, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Well, we, we kind of learned... Like like we said, talking about what they're doing at WWE shows now. <laughs> it's like we're... we're, we're we we kind of learned that they they weren't as up on you know on the up and up as mm. as we were led to believe. So if they're not, you know, up up to their like the testing and all that stuff, you know, it's I I I guess I learned that we maybe put a little too faith too much faith in them that they were doing the right thing or as close to the right thing. I don't know. Yeah, or at least somebody did. Some people did. Yeah. Uh, what about yeah. you, Mike? <laughs> Oh, I learned, man, I, I learned, I, I learned that somehow, some way in between losing terribly on raw, almost winning the NXT Cruiserweight championship, Akira Tozawa was somehow able to to become the head of the foot clan. Hmm. Hmm. I didn't see that one coming. No. No. I didn't see that one coming. And also, it makes me want to assign turtle designations for Montez Ford, Angela Dawkins, Eric, and Ivar. Which one is the party dude? I would say that's Ivar. I would say that's either Ivar or Dawkins. See or or what about or I don't know. Let's see, er, like Montez, I feel like is, I think he's got to be the Leonardo. I see. He, he, uh, he takes control of a lot of these segments. Not, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think Eric is more the tech guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he he showed profinity like like. He, he he was a master at at the bowling alley. Like I'm pretty sure he was the one who was like okay when the strobe lights came on. So I'm assuming he does machines. <laughs> He's not scared um, by modern technology. Right. Now I I will say based <laughs> on Dawkins's history of like hitting on Nikki Cross, I'd say he's probably rude 
like cool, but rude. And I'm going to say Ivar is a party dude because the ladies love him. And Eric, not so much. (laughs) And by the way, that does mean Big Show is Splinter. Because he can't be Casey Jones because that is raw guest star Stephen Amell. Jeez. Jeez. I, mm. <laughs> I was we went the whole way. We went the whole way. I thought Oh, I was thinking, oh no, you know what? I was thinking uh was it Chris Evans was was he Casey Jones in this CG movie? What? Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Yes, That's he was. Really? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I forgot about oh. that. Yeah. Patrick Stewart yeah. was the bad guy. I remember that part. Um. Anyways, wow, that went. I some forgot places. about that, Matt. What you learn yeah. from wrestling this week? Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Follow that. <laughs> Would you- um. I'm still a sucker for Captain Charisma. Just the mere suggestion that he might wrestle another match was enough to make me go, like, "What?" Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh. And uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling is worth the wait. Fantastic. What about you, Tony? What'd you learn? I, I learned two things this week. Uh, the Dark Order does do franchise licenses, mm-hmm. and they are very not uh, stringent on their dress code policy following the franchise <laughs> rules. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what was that from? Tazawa is, is discount Dark Order. Oh! <laughs> the ninjas are discount Dark Order. <laughs> Thank you for walking me through that. Yeah, I got you. Did anyone else get that? Let me know in the chat. If not, I'm way too dense for this. Uh, and the second thing I learned, um, just pieced out of my head, but but basically it's similar to the Christian thing, um, that his first Close Your Eyes song was much better than his last Close Your Eyes mm-hmm. version. Mm-hmm. Uh, Waterproof Blonde. Uh, Waterproof Blonde was the first. And I who did it? God, who did the second one? It's it's a pop punk band. I have their CDs, and I can't remember who does it. Oh, we'll look that up. Well, well somebody drop that in the Facebook group. Oh, yeah, but the Waterproof on just crushed it, and it was such a it was such a melancholy version of that song. I loved it. Of course, you know, at last or on your own was phenomenal, but I really do love Just Close Your Eyes as a song, and I did very much cry a little bit when they came out. To, he came out to the ECW version of that. Because I remember Match Strike, or no, it was uh, was it Todd Graham? It was just it's no, it's I know Christian. what you're thinking about, but that was Striker, yeah. Was it Striker? It, where yeah. his 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 shock was, hey guys, it's Christian. Check this out. Check this crap out. I thought you were gonna say like when Striker was saying that the when Christian came back and he said this moment is become instantly classic. So he was well, like, that was a fun part TNA. of it. But there's we, so so. I remember him, he came back to face off against Jack Swagger for the ECW championship. And I remember this very vividly because the reaction was so nonchalant from the commentary booth. That I was like, yes, it's fucking Christian. <laughs> Will you <laughs> pop for him? You asshole. Wow. Um, what the fuck? Uh, sorry. I'm reading the chat. That's what I'm what the fucking hold on Christian a second. Cage, baby. TNA. I got, I got Christian a roll through. I, no, I got you. I got your Christian Cage. <laughs> No, no, sorry. There's the management over here. Uh, Dave Ponder says, so he learned turkey legs are magic, and there's a big ninja out there. Uh, let's see. Tina says that <laughs> she learned fuck sleep because New Japan is back. And uh, this is the one I was trying to go through, so help um, help me out here. Uh, Bobby F. J. Town says, I learned that Braun Strowman has a new nickname from him based on uh, the new music entrance video, Snowpiercer. Snorpiercer. Snorpiercer mm-hmm. is his name. Greatest so. match ever. This match has everything. Other superstars finishing moves, piped in, ghost crowd noises, blood, swear words. As written. Yep. Yes. I hope I represented that. No, the sword, map, sword, sword. There. Hold on. Sword, no. All right. Uh, sorry, Bobby. I know what you're going for. I'm going to do this properly. Sword, Bobby's doing a Stefan bit from SNL. But I don't know Stefan. I know. I'm about to do it for oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. WWE's new hottest match is the greatest match ever. This match has everything. Other superstars finishing moves, piped in ghosts, crowd noises, 
blood, swear words, the works. That's it. That's that's the bit. I forgot okay. Dave Cortez. Um, What's that? Well, well, well. Bill Hader always cracked up when uh, he would add Dave Cortez in a dress or something. You mean, you mean like Dan that. Cortez? Dan Cortez, yeah. not Dave Cortez. MTV MTV Sports is Dan Cortez. I was gonna say, <laughs> and it had oh, Shaquille O'Neal as a ninja. Yeah, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal as a ninja. And the, ghost, and the ghost of Howard Finkel. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost yeah. of Howard Finkel, yes. Absolutely. Like ghosts. I, yeah. I, I, I learned that uh, thanks to tonight, we're going to save uh, independent wrestling in Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's what I learned. We're going to do it at Mineral Beach. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm a, I, Sorg, Sorg, I've been saving commentary for two years now. You think I have, don't have a head start on you, bud? <laughs> <laughs> come to me man i got you guys a lot of stuff speaking of that uh first i want to give a shout out uh to go follow our friends the uh main event duke davis gannon jones jr follow any of their accounts they have a new shirt out uh supporting a great charity uh so please um uh, go check them out and pre-order that shirt and also our friend uh the rev ron hunt he's got links on all of his social media media accounts or over on his pro wrestling tees page uh he has a new black lives matter shirt with uh proceeds going to uh the black lives matter matter cause uh so please go support those support the causes support the guys that are uh, that are putting that out there uh so i want to give those shout outs for that also um I meant to mention this earlier when we were talking about the, the training sessions, but check out on Prospect Pro Wrestling um, the bracketology with Tony, with Doc, talking about the 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 matches coming up, the the oddball teams coming up, uh, including the first promos of all those teams meeting each other, um, and the first of the quarantine matches starts this Saturday on Prospect Pro Wrestling social media on the Facebook uh, page, and Wednesday night we're going it's going to be a very special treat because Zeke Mercer and Stevie LaBelle are going to have a match, and it was. Um, it, it was one of the highlights of the training sessions uh, 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 taping. So please go check that out. Remember, both of them have a very extensive martial arts background, and that comes out a lot in this match. Tony, I know you had some thoughts on this. because I think you're the first one that's complimented them on that match when we, when we cut. Uh, this match was so good, I left the commentary booth to cheer Zeke Mercer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I legitimately quit my job for, for 10 to 12 minutes to cheer on Zeke Mercer. Um, no, seriously. Wednesday at 10 tomorrow is, is yes. when it's premiering? Yes, so uh, we, as soon as uh, uh, NXT and AEW is done, hop over on that Facebook page. It'll be premiering live. You can jump in the chat with everybody. and will be on there afterwards. And watch this match is phenomenal. And just a quick shout out to Stevie LaBelle and Zeke Mercer. Mm-hmm. Um, the, because uh, sorry, this is sort of shoot a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Zeke Mercer <laughs> is so goddamn talented. People, if you're not watching his damn matches, you're a fucking idiot. This kid is so damn good. Two PW's roster, RWA's roster, Pittsburgh Independent Wrestling is in such a good place right now. If you are not paying attention, you are an idiot. Okay. Talk crap on me on my on my Kincaid Facebook profile as much as you want. You guys are dumb. Check these people out because they are so good and they're the future of wrestling and you really should be watching them. Forget Raw, forget SmackDown, forget NXT, even forget AEW. Wrestling is going to be saved by the independents, not from the television shows. There you go. Plus, plus with the two PW shows, it's like what that's only as far as in two PW, that, that was only Zeke's like third or fourth match with two PW, right? right? Third. And then and then we and then we never and then we never see Stevie like well he's he's had more like tag stuff with yep. the Hossman, right? Yep. So it's like so it's a pretty good showcase for you know Stevie who's been around for a while in two PW and then Zeke who's pretty much new to the scene as far as we're concerned. I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> so, hope, I hope so it's a good showcase for the two of them. And I hope people react to this match because I think this is a match that needs to happen again. Uh the sequel needs mm-hmm. to happen in front of an audience when that's allowed to happen. For two PW, so mm-hmm. I'll, build, that, I'll build a ring. I'll build a ring in my backyard to see this <laughs> match again. I will yeah. take money out of my pockets. I will buy a ring, put this on, and we'll allow people to come I, watch this. I can't party. wait. I can't wait to I, come to Tony Kincaid's backyard wrestling bash. Uh, <laughs> in, in coming coming this summer. Hopefully, the I, athletic I think, I think the ring. Thing. 
I think the ring is already there, and he's just trying to find a, an excuse. Not really. Wait, do you have, I, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, do you have adjoining backyards with Jamie Jameson? Because I've seen the ring in his backyard. No, yeah. my my ring is <laughs> simply a figment of my imagination from days mm. gone by when I was a kid in a moon bounce hoping to do a swan pond. And then, it, <laughs> yep, and, and that's why he became an announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Tony Kincaid, where can people, other than your voice over on 2PW and the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, where can people find you online to see what's up? I really just check Facebook uh, at, you know, at Tony Kincaid RWA. Um, just look up Tony Kincaid. It's a picture of me shaking Tommy True Blood's hand, which probably needs to be updated um no no offense to tommy uh, by the way uh, uh, also shouts to tommy true blood uh he yes. had a, a medical scare i understand that he's recovering well so i want to throw out to him um because i know he had some stuff going on so um so 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 shout outs for for him as well sorry back to you no exactly and and i just need a new profile picture it has nothing to do against tommy um, <laughs> but you know <laughs> You know, follow me there. Uh, ch- check out my words. Uh, it's not as active as possible because my real world job is social media, and you know what they say <laughs> about gynecologists looking at boobs off their time. Uh, sometimes you just see enough. Ah, well, you, you know what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got that. Mainstream Matt One T on the Twitter. Check out his show on Thursday nights and on the Sorgatron Media Master Feed, and that is listen to your parents where we discuss what the hell we're going to do now <laughs> with the kids. With the kids. Right? There's oh, no easy answers. No. So I, I was reminded by my sister today, the answers only get more complicated now. Just put them on a lake, Matt. No, 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 no. no. It's, <laughs> put them on a know, lake. Side, side note, the Matt. Phase and it should be all good, but it's not all good. It's only more complicated. The decisions only get more difficult. So, S- side note, Matt, when your when your child kept walking into the frame, I make fun of Doc for that on RWA posts all the time, and it took everything within me to not do that because <laughs> I was like, I'm a nice person today. Hey, no, uh, honestly, it's a good thing you didn't. He's a better booker than pretty much anyone working right now. <laughs> I gotta get the best tournament. Or, Sorg, please suck. Please tell me who to suck up to after the show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, it's that kid. Ma- uh, it's, you, it's, you'd be you'd be blessed to be a part of Mason Mania. Yes, that's right. not even a joke. You can call it. You can call it for him. <laughs> uh, Rob Brown. I mean, he's he's shooting yeah. video. He's working on stuff. I think he just got something to work on a trailer recently, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, you've seen yeah. his work. And I'm actually going back to work in three weeks. Holy too, crap! I don't. I'm not. I don't remember any of my passwords. I don't remember <laughs> my keys. I, I don't know. I got to buy clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I got probably find. Probably, I probably got to buy shoes. I can't find any of my work. I, stuff, uh, Rob so, works at a movie. Hey. Rob works at a movie theater, and you can understand how crazy that might be right now. Oh yeah, boy, how is that working? I didn't. They move I'm, all the. They moved all the movies back. Like even that one that was supposed to be on. Yeah, because. Yeah, because Tenet was what they were holding out for. That was supposed to come out on oh, the seventeenth of July, so yeah. we were going to open on the third. But they bumped it back two weeks. I don't know what difference two weeks makes, but you know, to the thirty-first. So I go back to work on the tenth. Yep. So and it's yeah, the tenth sure, of July. It's I'm sure. Be, I hope you're excited for Onward and Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, and trolls. Yeah, I don't know and what trolls. we're getting back. It's going to be weird. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> you should just start bringing in random stuff. Yeah. Well, the thing is with the the drive-ins, like they've been operating. Re- well, mm-hmm. we've got one mm-hmm. around here. They've been showing like some Amazon movies yep. and yep. like IF- IFC, like these distributors uh-huh. that normally don't get. Yeah. Like either full blown theatrical releases <laughs> to where like the number one movie in the country has been making maybe like tens of thousands of dollars. For, Maybe. You know, like I, 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 I think now, it's only know? thousands of dollars probably, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The two, uh, the two drive-ins around here. Um, yeah. One is showing, Oh, actually that's fucking baller. One is showing clue and Ferris Bueller's day off as a double feature. Uh, the one up here had, had <laughs> yeah. one, one of the screens. Cause we have a four screen uh, drive-in theater up by the airport. Yeah, and, I think ours and one of the also. screens was uh, Jurassic Park and Jaws. I almost went this weekend. Nice. Yeah. Uh, uh, the like, other one, like the other that. one by us is showing Muppet Movie and Dark Crystal. Also great. Also great. Yeah. Uh, Why not Muppet Movie and Muppets Take Manhattan? Just do the double feature. Mm-hmm. Or the Great Muppet Caper, Muppets and Sp- you know the, uh, everything. The whole Muppet oeuvre. oeuvre. <laughs> right. <laughs> have the Jim Henson, just, just give Jim Henson all the love. Jim Henson Muppet is first. one of the reasons. It's I'm the Muppet here first. Yeah. You're talking about the Muppet first. Yeah. Uh, Mad Mike four eight eight three on the, the Twitter. Cinematic universe. 
Uh, yes. Also, um, I mentioned this last night. I'll mention it again for a little bit. Go to theplaguenerdologues.com. Mm-hmm. It's done by Mark Bernarden from uh, Fat Man Beyond. Uh, <coughs> it, they have a whole bunch of nerdy actors, especially if you're fans of the CW uh, DC shows. A lot of them doing different monologues from a bunch of different nerdy movies. Um, all proceeds go to Black Lives Matter, and you can donate anything you want, and you get access to everything. There you go. It's great. So there's I, like there's like 40 videos on there. I oh, can't wait to I forgot them. to mention on Oscamp. Itchio.com uh, has like a thousand games you can pay five bucks for, and all of the uh, uh, proceeds are split between two uh, uh, Black Lives Matter related um, charities. Um, nice. So I, mean, shit, I meant to mention that on our show too. So okay, that's it. We plugged all the things. We've been on forever. Well, Thank you, everybody. Plug, one more plug. Ah, one, one more plug. plug. One more plug. One more plug. So uh, last thing I want to say is uh, the reason I'm on this show is because of Michael Doc Doherty, and uh, I don't know if I want to get Mike and I on this show and and talk a little bit more about wrestling sorg. Um, so I'm throwing that out there. Get Mike on this show. Get me on this show because Mike. Michael Doc Doherty is really cool, really good person. One of my closest friends in the world. Uh, I love that dude like a brother, and he's the reason I'm here today. And I'm doing a podcast on wrestling. Uh, two years prior, I wanted to never watch wrestling again. God bless. There you go. That's a great story. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait.